Well, good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. This is a service being shared by two churches, the Evangelical Covenant Church of Thief River Falls and the Evangelical Free Church of Thief River Falls. My name is Pastor Kevin. This is my lovely wife, Allison, to my right. And on my far left is our associate pastor, Kent Hudson. And to his right is Bert and his lovely wife, Christine Foster. So we are excited to be sharing this Good Friday service with you and um, just hope that this is a blessing to you and to both congregations here in town and all those who are watching online. The service of Tenebrae, meaning darkness or shadows, has been practiced by the church since medieval times. Once a service for the monastic community, Tenebrae later became an important part of worship with the common folk during Holy Week. Tonight, we join Christians throughout the world in remembering the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Tenebrae is a prolonged meditation on the suffering of Christ. Scripture readings from Matthew's Gospel trace the story of Christ's passion, music portrays his pathos, and the power of silence and darkness suggests the drama of this momentous day. As the light of Christ's life is extinguished and our readings and songs come to a close, Pastor Kevin will lead us in a time of solemn reflection. Join us in prayer. Father God, we admit that it is very easy for us to jump to Sunday when it comes to Easter weekend, and we think of the resurrection and the hope that it gives us, and God, that is so important, but sometimes when we do that, we jump past the agony and the great sacrifice of Friday. And so, God, would you draw us to that tonight? Would we be just reminded of the grace and the sacrificial love of your Son as he hung on the cross for our sins? It's in his name we pray. Amen. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him, one after another, Is, is it, it I, Lord? Lord? He answered, he who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Join us in singing verse 1. Behold the Lamb who bears our sins away, slain for us. And we remember the promise made that all who come in faith find forgiveness at the cross. So we should. So we should. 
blood that cleanses every stain of sin shed for you. Drink and remember, he drink death's cup that all may enter in to receive the life of God. So we share. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said this to his disciples. Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father... If this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, 
Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But all this has taken place that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had seized Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and elders had gathered, and Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to rebuild it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do we need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves deserves death. death. Then they spit in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who Who is is it that that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. 
And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly Certainly you too too are are one of them, them, for for your your accent accent betrays betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. And when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? 
but he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who was called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His His blood blood be be on us and and on our our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified.
Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail, King King of of the the Jews! Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests, with the scribes and elders, mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way.
Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this this was the Son of God. There were also many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph the mother of the sons of Zebedee.
When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him, and Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and then went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, Sir, we remember how how that imposter said, said, while he was was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal away and tell the people, He has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. We've walked through Matthew's gospel, through Matthew's account of Jesus' last hours. We started with the Last Supper, and we just read about the tomb and the guard set at the tomb. It's been a journey tonight, a journey that we hope and pray has been helpful for you in capturing and in rekindling what cost our Lord paid for our forgiveness. We began our first reading mentioning a cup. I hold in my hand a chalice or a cup that was made here by a local artisan and it's quickly become one of my favorite uh, items in my office. A cup and a loaf of bread were and are still common at a dinner table. So when Jesus gathered his disciples together at the Passover meal, they were using common items. Now, it was the Passover meal, and so there were special implications already embedded in the use of the cup and the bread. So when Jesus took the cup of blessing, as it's called, and he said, this is my blood, something changed. We don't know what the disciples thought when Jesus said that, but they knew something was different. They knew something was being taught to them that it that was different than what they knew growing up, hearing the Passover meal led by probably their parents and at their family table or their, the company of their extended family. Something changed when Jesus picked up the bread in that cup and described them as his body and blood. And tonight we followed the implications of that until the very end or at least almost to the very end. You've endured with us a very somber service, and it's intentional that way, because we want to capture tonight how awful, how horrible Jesus' arrest, trumped-up trial, and crucifixion were. Now, this was not an accident. This was not something that happened to Jesus because he was caught off guard or unawares. No, this cup was intentional. So when Jesus said to his disciples, take and drink of this cup, he knew what was coming. In the garden, he prayed not once, not twice, but three times for the cup to be taken away from him, but then resigned himself by saying, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus knew what the cup meant. And the cup, as Matthew writes in his gospel, so when Jesus commanded to his disciples, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, he passed that cup around. And though they didn't understand, they took a drink. They obeyed in faith, they took a drink. I can't imagine what it was like For then by the end of that evening, to have abandoned Jesus. And by the end of that next day, know that he was in a tomb. 
their despair must have been utter. The cup that Jesus mentions is a cup of forgiveness. And I want to just close with these few thoughts on forgiveness. Normally, in a tenebrae service, we would have a chance to take time to reflect on our own in the quiet and stillness of a sanctuary. But I realize I'm, I'm speaking to a camera and you're listening to this in your family room or living room. And you may have your little kids around and that may not be a possibility. So perhaps this is something better left for later tonight um, or in the morning. But I really would encourage you to take some time on your own, maybe with a journal or just in prayer and count the blessing and think of what Christ has paid for in his blood for you. And little ones, you know, this is something that applies to you too. If you're a young boy or young girl, think about what Jesus has paid for and how much he loved you in this cup, this cup of forgiveness. So forgiveness is in and of itself a gift, right? If we break down the word for, give, and then nest, gives right in the middle. So at the very least, forgiveness is a gift. And a gift means there's, there's grace being given to someone at the cost of the giver. So forgiveness in this cup is a gift. And Jesus passes that gift around to his disciples, though they don't understand the meaning until some days or weeks later. But he gives them this gift. Well, what is the gift? The gift is forgiveness. Forgiveness from what? Well, forgiveness from our sins. Forgiveness from all the ways that we have sinned against our God and the creatures he's made. Any one of us here, even if you're three years old or 300, our lists are long enough. Even if there was just one, it's enough. It's enough to reap the wrath of God for he's perfect and holy and doesn't suffer sin. In the Old Testament, the cup is more often talked of as a cup of wrath, not a cup of blessing. So Jesus passes this cup around as was part of the Passover meal, knowing that he will be drinking the cup of God's wrath on the cross in just a few hours. So as you and I, as we think about and we meditate on this Good Friday, which is at first view a, a funny name, isn't it? Good Friday. What's good about Jesus being put on trial and wrongly accused, beaten severely, whipped, tortured, and then hung on a cross? What's good is the gift. What's good is what comes to us. And tonight, I hope and I pray as well we did as a group before we met that this gift would be a blessing to you and that you would be reminded of just what great love God has for you through his son and that you would be encouraged, though in the darkness there is still light. And I realize in this time of isolation, this message is more timely than ever. So dear friends, take some time this evening or tomorrow morning when you can get some quiet time and reflect on all that Jesus has done by spilling his blood and drinking the cup of wrath. And may you be all the more ready Easter morning to sing with joy, a joy that is unconquerable, just like Jesus was unconquerable. I pray all these things in his matchless name. Good night.